Guys, I have a, a question here from, from John. He's asking, how can somebody gain better experience in the areas in the areas that are not necessarily part of the services typically offered by, you know, traditional firms? Um, he says, you guys mentioned the Emerging Professionals Companion, uh, which he, th- you know, suggests he thinks is being uh, phased out in the next year or so. Any other thoughts on this? Mike, you want to? No, go ahead. I mean, okay. it, it is, in fact, being phased out. I, it, there's some other things coming in to replace it, but um, do, any thoughts on that? Well, uh, the, the whole, this whole area of what they call supplemental experience, <clears throat> the S category and, and NCARB's three categories of experience, the A stands for working for an architect, O stands for working for somebody other than an architect, which you can get experience for, and, and we'll talk about that in a few minutes. And then the S stands for things that you might do on your own, such as the Emerging Professionals Companion. What, um, which, which are these case studies that I was saying that you can, that you can read and answer the questions and get experience. And that is, <clears throat> that is being phased out and will no longer be available for uh, experience, for applicable experience. So in those areas that are difficult to get experience in, such as what I just mentioned, the business operations and spec writing, you know, you have to spend a certain certain amount of time here in learning how to write specifications, uh, cost estimating, mm-hmm. and even construction observation. There are some firms, I remember there was one big firm here in, in Chicago a few years ago when there was virtually no work being done in this country. All of their work was overseas and they came to me and they said, how do we get experience? Right. In, how, do, how do our interns get experience in construction observation when we don't have any local... Right, when everything is happening in and, Dubai and we can't, or China And we can't send something. them over to these other places where the construction is going on. So NCARB did respond to that. And their response was, you can go to a construction site with your mentor. Now, we haven't talked about mentors yet, but we should. Yeah. You can go to a construction site with your mentor and get experience. And your mentor probably is somebody, should be somebody outside of your firm who will be kind of like a coach, kind of help you through this this whole process. And there are a lot of architects out there that serve that role as mentors. And you can go to a construction site with them. You don't have to go necessarily in your own firm and still get that experience that you need. So that's the way to do it that way. And, and these other areas, the spec writing and the, and the um, organization of work within the firm, construction administration work, those kind of things, if your firm doesn't provide it, then you need to get experience somewhere else. And, and I frankly tell, tell my interns that, that ask me this question, if your firm doesn't provide these services, you do need to get experience in them. So you're gonna have to go to another firm at some point. And that's nothing, no mark against you at all to do that. In fact, it's good to get a wide range of experience in a lot of firms. Yeah, I mean, the great thing that I always say is, you know, even if you come out of school and you're, you need to make some money and you get a job at a place that isn't the perfect spot for you, but, you know, at least it kind of gets you going, there's going to be great experience to be had there. You know, there's going to be somebody there who really knows how to detail a building or somebody who's really good at contracts or something. And you just want to be sort of, strategic about it like you scope out the situation see what's what's interesting that's happening there and then get as much experience at that as you can as well as whatever you can get on your idp and then move on when the moment's right yeah keep in mind that you are not required to do any of this on your own you're not required to do cost estimating on your own you're required to work under the direction of somebody that's the whole idea behind the internship program is that you have a guide, you have a, a supervisor who will um, help you through this process. They won't give you full responsibility for it. Uh, I do remember uh, when I was an apprentice, um, my, my boss took me into his office one day and he said, here's, here's the budget we have for this job. And we have so much money allocated to design, so much money allocated to design development, so much for construction documents and so much for construction administration. He had the numbers actually blacked out, so I couldn't see it. But he, but he told me this is how you organize the job and you have to make sure that you're not exceeding the number of person hours, man hours, 
for each one of those categories, otherwise your firm is not going to make any money. Right, time is money. And, yeah. and that's the kind of, of sit-down discussion that you need to have at some point during your because they don't teach you this in school, <laughs> and and if they do teach you in school, it just goes over your head, and you yeah, forget about it's, it. Yeah, it's too, it's too. You, you uh, learn enough to pass the test, right? And exactly. That's all. <laughs> uh, but those are really important conversations to have. Yeah. And partly it's about IDP, and partly it's just about making yourself a more well-rounded architect as you move through the process. And maybe now is a good time to talk about this mentorship yeah. relationship. Um, in card from the very from its very beginnings said that there are two people involved in your becoming an architect, besides yourself. One is your supervisor, and that's the person who is your boss, which I call the boss, the person who observes you on a, on a daily basis, gives you assignments to do, reviews the assignment, and is pays, also licensed. pays your, pays your uh, salary, and, and who, would, who would be a licensed architect. The second person is a mentor. And the mentor should be a licensed architect, although they don't have to be in the same firm. They, they, I'm sorry, they do have to be a licensed architect, but not necessarily in the same state that you're in. Um, and you meet with them, I always recommend on a monthly basis, you sit down, you tell them what you're doing, they give you feedback on how they think you're doing and what, what you need to do in order to become uh, more skilled at the direction that you're trying to go in. It's a, it's a way of unloading your problems because there's always problems that people have in every firm where they, you know, they, they don't like somebody or somebody's criti highly critical of their work and, and it just, they just get aggravated by it. And so they have to have somebody to share this with. You can't share it with your boss. Right. You know that. And, and so it gives you another way of, of uh, uh, inspecting how you, yourself and how you're making progress and how you can better yourself in the profession. Uh, yeah. It's something that's recommended, always has been recommended, I always recommend it to interns that contact me, but it's not absolutely required. And you know, there are some states that have toyed with the idea of requiring mentors, but none of them have actually come through. Yeah, it's a tricky thing to require, I think, but, um, but it is a really good idea. Uh, for one, it turns all those, uh, as you say, those kind of negative conversations into constructive converse conversations, sure. instead of sort of gossiping about how you hate your firm, you now you have a chance to actually talk about, well, why is it working? Why is it not or working? Or how you're not how making as much money as you think you yeah, should as be. As you think you should, and, right? And, and they'll give you a better perspective. Somebody could give you a little <laughs> bit of a, a way to see it from a different angle, yeah. exactly, yeah. Um, and one of the things I've always found, whether it's an official version of mentoring or not, but uh, architects are, across the board, really happy to talk to young architects, mm -hmm. recent, recent graduates, people who are students, uh, because they remembered what it was like when they went through. Yeah, and it's kind of a bond. They want to share the that. studio process. Sure. We're, we're kind of all bonded in this exactly. kind of interesting way uh, that, that definitely go out of your way to make those contacts, even if it's not through a, a classic program. <laughs>